so we are looking at the layout of Microsoft Word and if you look at this first part here under home this is the clipboard group where you have cut copy format painter and paste currently the paste icon is not active including copy and cut it's because we don't have anything on the document this second group here is for formatting what you already have to be bold italics or underline so you can see that currently there it's calibri body you can change it to any font that you want we also have the font size that you can also modify to make your text bigger so if you are going to be typing on a document any text that is generated like the example that I'm using now you have to highlight first then you can modify the text so it means that if you go to the tools now you will see that cut copy is now active so if I'm going to change from this set of tools under font and make the text that I just typed to appear in a different font style I will go here and change the font type to be according to the one that I want you will see that now this has changed to Lucida handwriting and then if I change the font size and then I enlarge it to be what I want it to be you can see there it is changing so if you are going to make it bold you will click B it means bold and then if you are going to underline it it's you there and then it's underlined if you want it double underlined you can click this small arrow here and then you go there you will find different types of underlinings if I take double underline you see there is double underlined if I go and take a wavy line then it's wavy lined and then if you have something typed in small letters like I have now you can make it appear in uppercase which is capital letters by going there on this icon and then you'll find uppercase when I choose uppercase you see now they are in alphabetical letters so it doesn't matter what you have typed so if we have Samuel tabs online typed in small letters then you will see that now it will also copy the Lucida handwriting font type I can change it back to Korea new I can change it to be uppercase I can change the font size to be bigger and make it like this so now what if now you have another text appearing there at the bottom and then it's not underlined it's not bold so it means now probably you are typing again on a new line so if I'm going to type anything again like this and then now I want this type of formatting to be part of the second line as well I can click in and make sure that the cursor is blinking next to or within the text that I have in the first line then I go to the format painter there once I click format painter you will see when I take my mouse to the document it changes to appear with a brush so when I brush over my text it will copy the style of the first one so that is how you format paint and you actually copy the style that you used in the beginning so if you are going to have this text in the beginning copy it then you will highlight copy and then you go and put the cursor where you want by double clicking and then you click paste using the icon on top of the weight paste here and then that line will come if you want to remove this and then you want to make it appear at the bottom of the third line you can highlight it and cut and then go where you want it to be by double clicking and then you paste 
So that is how these two groups work. You have the clipboard for copy, cut and paste. You have the font group where you can make something appear in a different type of style, which is the font type, font size, either bold, italics or underline. Or you can even change the font size. This group here, which is the third one, is for formatting paragraphs. If you click this icon here, it's called the group launcher. If I click it here, it enlarges the screen to give me more options. And then now I have indentation, I have spacing. So between the weights or the lines of typing, you can increase the space by going to line spacing. So if I go to the text here on my document, you see subscribe there that says subscribe to Samuel Tabs online. There's a space there. I can have more than one line. This is how you do it. Probably maybe you have typed other things as well as part of the paragraph. So as the paragraph is growing like this, you see now this is a complete paragraph. Now I want to make sure that my paragraph has more lines. So I go to the paragraph group, open the group launcher, and then I can change the line spacing there. I can, I can make it double. And then when I click OK, you will see that the space between my lines increases. I can even take this font back to font size 12 so that you see the difference so when it's font size 12 you see it's only making two lines so let's say i keep on typing and then i have more text appearing as part of this paragraph so after typing all this text and then now later on probably this is part of the text that you type as a paragraph then I will have to format all these to change the line spacing. The line spacing is the space between your lines as indicated as you see there. So you first highlight the whole paragraph, go to the paragraph launcher there, and then line spacing, I can make it single line spacing. Clicking OK, you will see that now the space is no longer bigger. If I go again to the group launcher and click there and make it 1.5 and click OK, you see that is how the space between your lines increases. So if you are not doing spaces, then you can look at this. This is the alignment. So this alignment here that we are using currently, it's left aligned. You can have it centered. You can have it right aligned. You can have it justified. Justified is when the margins on the left and the margins on the right are trying to justify. So it means if the text allows to reach the margin, it will expand to go there. Then if a te the text is shorter, it will be the last one not arriving on the margin line. Then here you have where you can have a list of items that you can number according to bullets or numbering. Probably you have a list of things that you are typing. Maybe we have items. Our items is like Omo, Save. Then we have Mac Mac probably. And then we have a Sunlight. So now all these are items, so I can say it's a list. You can highlight them and then when after highlighting them like that, then you make them appear with numbers by clicking numbers. Under numbers, you have more options. The options that you have there, you have Roman figures and then you also have the numbering system as you know it. Then after that you will see that you can even change the type of bullets that you want by highlighting still again after highlighting your text you can go to the button or the arrow next to bullets to ch choose 
the type of bulletin that you want so if I take this then it will apply the bullets as you see them there and then the next group here is the style of the text that you want to apply because if you have a heading like this you can highlight it and go and expand to see more styles so you can change any heading to be a type of heading style that you you want to apply so they have their names there subtitle and then you also have heading one strong code according to the way you want it if i take intense there you will see that is different from the text because that is a style of the text that i've chosen you have insert tab there where i click under insert you are inserting new things when you when you click on insert you will see that you are having different tools or different icons or options that you can choose to insert so this can also be part of your document according to what you want to add rather than only having text under design when you click there under design we have different types of things that you can design as part of your document under layout is the way in which you want your page to appear either you want the orientation firstly to be landscape or portrait or you are going to be changing the page to have breaks or appear in columns then when you go to references the references is when you are going to have a list of sources that you referenced for this document firstly you see there we have table of contents and then you can insert table of contents according to your preference so mailings is a function of creating what we call mail match if you want to learn mail match you can refer to one of the videos that i've uploaded earlier on review it's when you want to check the spelling and grammar and also translate the language and also check if there are errors that you want to indicate so under view you have options whereby you can view the document with another document as you're still working on it side by side so this option actually helps you to actually work on the document rather than actually presenting it later on this works normally when you are still um, using the document or creating some information or populating your document with text developer is when you are actually coming with controls putting controls on the document so that people can have options of uh, clicking buttons on top of your page to add icons to add pictures to actually have a list of things that they tick and options that they select as if like they are on an interface which is like in a form or an online form or a system that they've created thank you for watching